Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Rajya Sabha witnesses adjournments after uproar by opposition over price rise issue. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari asserts country's road network will be at par with United States by 2024. BJP leader Pushkar Singh Dhami to take oath as Chief Minister of Uttarakhand in Dehradun tomorrow. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett to pay three-day visit to India from 3rd April. World Water Day is being observed today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates call for saving every drop of water. Over 181 crore 56 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Prime Minister to inaugurate Biplobi Bharat Gallery at Victoria Memorial Hall in Kolkata on Shaheed Divas tomorrow. In Women's Cricket World Cup, India defeat Bangladesh by 110 runs at Hamilton. And Swiss Open Badminton begins at Basel today with mixed doubles competition. As we start the bulletin, we appeal to our listeners to stay safe from COVID-19 by following these four simple steps. Get fully vaccinated, wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And other news in detail. The Rajya Sabha witnessed repeated adjournments today after uproar by opposition parties over price rise. The upper house was adjourned till 12 noon following opposition uproar over the issue. When the house met at noon, similar noisy scenes continued. Following this, the house was adjourned till 2 p.m. amid the din. Earlier, the Rajya Sabha observed silence as a mark of respect for those who died in the China Eastern Airlines crash yesterday. Rajya Sabha Chairman Venkaiya Naidu said the loss of precious life in the crash is painful road transport and highways minister nitin gadkari today asserted the country's road network would be as good as the united states of america by 2024 he said enhancing road infrastructure would spur employment opportunities in tourism along with agriculture Replying to the discussion on demands for grants for the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways in the Lok Sabha, Mr. Gadkari apprised the House about the number of projects undertaken in Leh, Ladakh, and Srinagar. He assured that the House, before the year ends, Srinagar to Mumbai can be travelled by road in 20 hours. साल समाप्त होने के पहले मेरी कोशिश होगी कि श्रीनगर से आप 20 घंटे के अंदर मुंबई पहुंच जाओगे ऐसा काम हो हमारे लिए खुशी की बात है कि दिल्ली से जयपुर दो घंटे में दिल्ली से हरिद्वार दो घंटे में दिल्ली से डेहराडून दो घंटे में दिल्ली से जयपुर दो घंटे में दिल्ली से अमृतसर चार घंटे में और दिल्ली से मुंबई बारह घंटे में इसी साल हम दिसंबर के पहले कर सकें Mr Gadkari said from Chennai to Bengaluru can be reached in 2 hours in the near future he said 22 green highway corridors would be constructed throughout the country to increase efficient logistic infrastructure ग्रीन एक्सप्रेस हाईवे बन रहे हैं ग्रीन एक्सप्रेस हाईवे का मतलब यह कि पुराने रोड को हमने छोड़ दिया सूरत से निकलेगा ग्रीन एक्सप्रेस हाईवे सूरत से नासिक नासिक से अहमदनगर अहमदनगर से सोलापुर और सोलापुर से करनूल तो पूरा मुंबई पुणा का 50 तक के ट्रैफिक जाम कम होगा पूरा दक्षिण का पूरा ट्रैफिक जो उत्तर से निकल रहा है वो पूरा सूरत से निकल जाएगा तो लॉजिस्टिक कॉस्ट भी कम होगी फ्यूल भी बचे ऐसे बावीस ग्रीन एक्सप्रेस हाईवे बन रहे हैं और मेरा विश्वास है कि इसमें निश्चित रूप से काफी फायदा होगा The minister informed the house that a thousand contractors will be employed to transplant the trees which are cut down to create new roads. Minister of State for Home Nishit Pramanik today said border guarding forces are well equipped to neutralize threats emanating from misuse of drones by rogue elements including terrorists. In a written reply in the Lok Sabha the minister said an incident of use of drone to deliver ammunition was noticed and drone was neutralized in Punjab along Indo Pakistan border in this year. Mr Pramanik said anti drone systems have been deployed along the border to tackle such situations. In addition border guarding forces have taken various preventive and precautionary measures to counter drones this includes framing of standard operating procedures for countering drone adequate deployment of troops and patrolling and deployment of surveillance equipment 
more than 7 lakh 70 thousand rural facilities such as medical education and markets have been geotagged under phase 3 of pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana pmgsy in a written reply the lok sabha minister of state for rural development sadvi niranjan jyoti said rural development ministry has released geographical information system data developed for pmgsy scheme in public domain on the 22nd of february this year she termed it as a historic and most important contribution to national geospatial mission the gis data created under pmgsy national gis guideline is not just of rural areas but a holistic national geospatial data set including urban areas national highways state highways and railway tracks geo sarak has been developed using fully indigenous gis data layers and satellite data services this data specially captured the rural roads 10 lakh habitations and other facilities in rural and remote areas which existing public and private mapping data sets did not cover meaningfully The government has taken several steps since August 2019 to fill up all the vacant posts in the union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. In a written reply in the Lok Sabha Minister of State for Home Nityanand Rai said the government has conducted recruitment drive in a transparent manner. The minister informed the house that an accelerated recruitment committee was constituted for identifying gazetted, non-gazetted and class 4 posts. He said 26,330 posts have been identified in various departments in Jammu and Kashmir and taken up for recruitment. The minister said the selection process has been completed till now for 11,324 gazetted, non-gazetted and class 4 posts. The minister said the Ladakh administration has also taken various measures for filling up of vacant posts. He said 613 district cadre posts have been filled and 293 vacant posts in Ladakh police have been advertised. He said 45 vacant posts of JK Bank have also been advertised for candidates from Ladakh. The Minister for Food Processing Industries Bashupati Kumar Para said his ministry will consider setting up a food park in Jammu and Kashmir whenever a proposal is received. On being asked about setting up food parks under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana by Anant Nag MP Hussain Masoodi, the minister informed this in the Lok Sabha. In reply to another question the minister informed that the integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure scheme is helping in bringing down post harvest losses in the food processing sector. The Minister of State for Youth Affairs and Sports Nishit Pramanik said the sports infrastructure and promotion of sports in the country is gaining new heights. Replying to a question in the Lok Sabha today the minister assured that the center would provide all help needed to develop sports in rural areas. As many members expressed the interest on the subject speaker Om Birla said that the house would discuss it in detail in the next week the minister informed that the government is running two schemes for the welfare of indian sports persons of national and international level mr pramanik said pandit din dayal upadhyay national welfare fund for sports persons and a scheme of pension to meritorious sports persons have been given he said the objective of the scheme of pension to meritorious sports persons is to provide a short monthly income through annuity for outstanding sports persons BJP leader Pushkar Singh Dhami will take over as the chief minister of Uttarakhand in Dehradun tomorrow afternoon. Given this information, BJP state media in charge Manveer Singh Chauhan said Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other central leaders will be present at the swearing-in ceremony. Preparations are underway for the grand oath-taking ceremony. Yesterday, Mr. Dhami was selected as the BJP legislative party leader by the newly elected members. Our correspondent reports that it is the first time in the state's history. that a party has come to power for a second term in a row bjp has stormed back to power for an unprecedented second successive term in the hill state winning 47 seats in the 70 member legislative assembly uttar pradesh chief minister designate yogi adityanath today tendered his resignation from the state legislative council days after he was elected as an mla from gorakhpur he is expected to take oath as chief minister of the state for the second time on the 25th of march bjp state unit has decided to invite at least two party workers from village level centers so that they can witness the grand event in lucknow on friday talking to news persons in lucknow yesterday bjp state president swatantra dev singh said the party wants to make the swearing in ceremony of yogi adityanath a grand event and therefore two workers from each shakti kendra would be invited to attend the event 
Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will be on a three-day visit to India from the 3rd to the 5th of April at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The two leaders had earlier met on the sidelines of COP26 in Glasgow in November last year. External Affairs Ministry said the visit of Mr. Bennett will be his first to India in his capacity as Prime Minister. This visit would take place on the occasion of the commemoration of 30 years of full diplomatic relations between India and Israel and 75 years of India's independence. India and Israel elevated their bilateral relationship to a strategic partnership during the historic visit of Prime Minister Modi to Israel in July 2017. Since then, the two countries have continued to deepen their strategic partnership with a focus on innovation and research as two knowledge-based economies. The visit by the Prime Minister of Israel is expected to further strengthen the excellent bilateral cooperation in diverse areas, including in agriculture, water, trade, education and science and technology. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Rajya Sabha witnesses adjournments after uproar by opposition over price rise issue. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari asserts country's road network will be at par with the United States by 2024. BJP leader Pushkar Singh Dhami to take over as Chief Minister of Uttarakhand in Dehradun tomorrow. Israeli Prime Minister Neftali Bennett to pay a three-day visit to India from 3rd of April. World Water Day has been observed today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates call for saving every drop of water. Over 181 crore 56 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Prime Minister to inaugurate Biplobi Bharat Gallery at the Victoria Memorial Hall in Kolkata on Shahid Divas tomorrow. In Women's Cricket World Cup, India defeat Bangladesh by 110 runs at Hamilton. And Swiss Open Badminton begins at Basel today with mixed doubles competition. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on a Twitter handle at EIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Midday News. Today is World Water Day. The day focuses attention on the importance of fresh water and advocates for their sustainable management. It raises awareness of the 2.2 billion people living without access to safe water. The theme for this year is Groundwater Making the Invisible Visible. Groundwater accounts for 99% of the world's fresh water. On the occasion, Rajya Sabha Chairman Venkaya Naidu stressed on the importance of conserving groundwater. Addressing the House this morning, Mr. Naidu said this year the UN theme for World Water Day is groundwater making the invisible visible. He said the focus is on groundwater which exists as an invisible resource but impacts every life. On World Water Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called upon everyone to reaffirm the pledge to save every drop of water. In his message, the Prime Minister said our nation is undertaking numerous measures like Jal Jeevan Mission to ensure water conservation and access to clean drinking water for citizens. He said over the last few years, it is heartening to see water conservation becoming a mass movement with innovative efforts taking place in all parts of the nation. The Prime Minister appreciated all those individuals and organizations who are working towards saving water. Minister of State for Jal Shakti, Prahlad Singh Patel, has said the government implementing Jal Jeevan mission to make provision of tap water supply to every rural household. He said after the launch of the scheme in 2019, till yesterday, over six crore rural households have been provided tap water connection. Addressing World Water Day event in New Delhi organized by the National Mission for Clean Ganga today, Mr. Patel said, out of over 19 crore rural households in the country, provision of tap water supply has been made to over 9 crore households. He said a number of steps have been taken to plan and implement Jal Jeevan Mission in the whole country with speed and scale. Mentioning about groundwater, which is the theme and focus of this year, Mr. Patel urged everyone to use groundwater judiciously. 
Over 181 crore 56 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 30 lakh 58,000 doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 98.74%. Over 2,000 people recovered in the last 24 hours. Over 1,500 new cases were recorded in the same period. In Jammu and Kashmir, a 36-member delegation from the Gulf countries has arrived in Srinagar to strengthen ties and look at the investment opportunities in the region. Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sina yesterday hosted a dinner for the entrepreneurs and CEOs from Gulf countries who are on a four-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir. Mr. Sina has expressed his commitment to make Jammu and Kashmir as the most preferred investment destination in the country. We have a report. A 36-member business delegation from Gulf countries yesterday visited Pahalgam tourist destination in South Kashmir and in the next few days it is expected that they would also be visiting other tourist destinations in Kashmir including the ski resort of Gulmag to explore the investment opportunities in the tourism and hospitality sector. A business event is also underway at Sheri Kashmir International Convention Center in Srinagar today. The visit of the delegation is a follow-up to the Dubai Expo which was held in January this year in which Lieutenant Governor Manoshana had signed at least six MOUs in potential sectors like real estate, infrastructure, tourism, healthcare to generate investments for the industrial growth of Jomad Kashmir. This is Sunil Kohl for AR News from Srinagar. Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav today resigned from his membership of the Lok Sabha. Mr. Yadav met Speaker Om Birla and handed over his resignation letter. This comes after he was elected as an MLA from Karhal in the recently concluded Uttar Pradesh Assembly election. Samajwadi Party member Azam Khan also resigned from the lower house. Goa's Chief Minister-designate and BJP leader Dr. Pramod Savant and his Cabinet Ministers will be administered oath on the 28th of March. The swearing-in ceremony would take place at 11 a.m. at Dr. Shama Prasad Stadium near Bambuli, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Home Minister Amit Shah, BJP President J.P. Nadda, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari, State Chief Ministers and other senior BJP leaders will attend the ceremony. Mr. Savant gave this information to media persons in Parnaji today. Dr. Savant was elected as the leader of the BJP Legislative Party yesterday. The budget session of the Delhi Assembly will begin tomorrow. Delhi Lieutenant Governor Anil Bajal will address the House on the first day. During the seven-day session, which will continue till the 29th of this month, Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia, who also holds the finance portfolio, will present the budget. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Biplomi Bharat Gallery at the Victoria Memorial Hall in Kolkata tomorrow on Shahid Divas at 6 p.m. through video conferencing. The gallery displays the contribution of the revolutionaries in the freedom struggle and the armed resistance to British colonial rule. The purpose of this new gallery is to provide a holistic view of the events that led up to the 1947 and highlight the important role played by the revolutionaries. Mr. Modi will also address the gathering during the event. Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangathan will observe Shaheed Divas in all 623 districts across the country tomorrow as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. On the 23rd of March 1931, Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev were hanged to death in fond remembrance of the sacrifices made by the brave young revolutionaries. India observes Shaheed Divas every year on the 23rd of March. Youth Affairs Ministry said the day is being organized by Nehru Yuva Kendra by focusing on the theme Tribute to Revolutionaries. The programs aim at instilling a sense of gratitude, pride, honor and duty among the young generation by celebrating the life, works and philosophy of the freedom fighters. Senic School in Delhi will be named after Shaheed Bhagat Singh. Briefing reporters, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said the government is building a Shaheed Bhagat Singh Armed Forces Preparatory School in Jaroda Kala, where students will be trained for the armed forces. He said no fees will be charged for the school and it will have separate hostels for boys and girls. Mr. Kejriwal said any student residing in Delhi can take admission in the school for classes 9th and 11th. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav (laughs) 
Azadi ka safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day Their Excellencies the Viceroy and Marchioness of Linlithgow greet Sir Stafford Cripps on his arrival at New Delhi for consultations with leaders of Indian political parties. On the 22nd of March 1942, Cripps mission headed by senior British minister Sir Stafford Cripps came to India. The British government wanted to secure Indian cooperation and support for their efforts in World War II, and Stafford Cripps worked to keep India loyal to the British war effort in exchange for a promise of elections and dominion status once the war was over. Cripps discussed the proposals of dominion status which he had drafted himself with the Indian leaders and published them. The Indian National Congress rejected his proposals. No middle ground was found and the mission failed. Congress moved towards the Quit India movement and refused to cooperate in the war effort. In response, the British imprisoned the Congress leadership for the duration of the war. Dinesh she bhumir deshe hum ta pora hoy chhaya we are also remembering legendary freedom fighter master da surya sen who was born on the 22nd of march 1894 at chittagong now in bangladesh he is best known for leading the 1930 chittagong armory raid Surya Sen was above the parochial views prevalent in the society and gave prominent place to women in his revolutionary army he said Many among my countrymen may be shocked to learn how a woman brought up in the best tradition of Indian womanhood has taken up such a horrible deed as to massacre human lives I wonder why there should be any distinction between males and females in a fight for the country's freedom if brothers can feel for their mother country and can fight for her cause why not the sisters the manifesto of the indian republican army formed by master da declared its intention to stand against the repression by the british people and their government which they had followed as a cruel policy to keep the 300 million indian people subjugated for unlimited time and eradicate the slightest trace of nationalism and national originality amongst them it said the right of ownership of india and the control of destinies belong to the people of india only and the long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and the government has not extinguished that right no it ever can jara jabar gache pare ghore u nahi pare u nahi je jan achi ma After successfully leading the revolutionary movement Surya Sen was finally caught by the British he was executed on the 12th of January 1934 in Chittagong district jail Surya Sen's dead body was said to be burned in the boiler of a ship All India Radio salutes the great martyr also remember freedom fighter hanuman prasad poddar who died on the 22nd of march 1971 born in 1892 in ratangarh rajasthan poddar was affectionately known as bhai ji poddar waged a struggle to boycott foreign goods and foreign clothes and started using khadi and other indigenous goods at a young age poddar was arrested for revolutionary activities along with other freedom fighters from bengal on charges of treason after completing his jail term he moved to mumbai under the inspiration of jamna lal bajaj and met nationalists including netaji subhash chandra bose mahadev desai and krishna das ja
Poddar is also the founder of Geeta Press Gorakhpur. Mahatma Gandhi also praised him for his work in instilling pride in India's glorious history and philosophic heritage among people. We salute the great nationalist. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Bihar is celebrating its 110th Foundation Day today. The state of Bihar was carved out from Bengal Presidency on the 22nd of March in 1912. This day celebrated is Bihar Divas. The theme of this year's event is Jal Jivan Hariyali. The President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister greeted people of Bihar on the state formation day. Bihar Governor Fagu Chauhan and Chief Minister Nitish Kumar have congratulated people on Bihar Divas. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said he is prepared to discuss a commitment from Ukraine not to seek NATO membership in exchange for a ceasefire, the withdrawal of Russian troops and a guarantee of Ukraine's security. In an interview with Ukrainian television channels yesterday, Mr. Zelensky said it is a compromise for everyone. Repeating his call for direct talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Zelensky said unless he meets with Putin, it is impossible to understand whether Russia even wants to stop the war. Japan today criticized Russia over its decision to discontinue peace treaty talks over the disputed Kuril Islands and withdraw from joint economic projects in retaliation for Tokyo's sanctions over Russia-Ukraine conflict. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Hirokazu Matsuno said that Russia's response is extremely unjustifiable and absolutely unacceptable. The two countries never signed a peace treaty formally ending World War II hostilities because of their dispute over the Russian-held islands north of Hokkaido, which Moscow took at the end of the war. The Sensex and the Nifty today climbed around 1% in the afternoon trade. The Sensex rose 552 points to trade at 57,844. The Nifty also gained 156 points to trade at 17,274. In the Women's Cricket World Cup, India defeated Bangladesh by 110 runs at the Seddon Park in Hamilton. Opting to bat first, India posted 229 for 7 in the stipulated 50 overs. In reply, Bangladesh were bowled out for 119 runs in 40.3 overs. The win was much needed for India to keep alive the hopes of making the grade in the tournament. The Swiss Open Badminton begins at Basel today. Top Indian shutters PV Sindhu, Saina Nehwal and Kidambi Srikanth will look to make a mark at the tournament. Lakshya Sen has pulled out of the tournament, citing fatigue after two successful final appearances in German Open and All England Championships. The opening day of the Swiss Open features packed schedule with mostly mixed doubles competition today. MR Arjun and Tressa Jolie will be meeting fourth seed Tan Kian Meng and Lai Pei Jing of Malaysia in the opening round of the mixed doubles today. And the mixed doubles pair of Dhruv Kapila and Gayatri Gopichand will face six seed Go Sun Huat and Shevan Jami Lai of Malaysia in the first round. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have strong surface winds during daytime. Jammu, Srinagar and Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. Leh and Gilgit are likely to have partly cloudy sky. Guwahati, Imphal, Shillong, Aizol, Kohima in the northeast will have partly cloudy sky with haze. Hyderabad and Vishakapatnam in the south will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Raj Sabha witnesses adjournments after uproar by opposition over price rise issue. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari asserts country's road network will be at par with the United States by 2024. BJP leader Pushkar Singh Dhami to take oath as Chief Minister of Uttarakhand in Dehradun tomorrow. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett to pay three-day visit to India from 3rd April. World Water Day is being observed today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterates call for saving every drop of water. Over 181 crore 56 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Prime Minister to inaugurate Biplobi Bharat Gallery at Victoria Memorial Hall in Kolkata on Shaheed Divas tomorrow. In Women's Cricket World Cup, India defeat Bangladesh by 110 runs at Hamilton. And Swiss Open Badminton begins at Basel today with mixed doubles competition. And with that, we end the midday news.